Hey, welcome to Two Guys Garage. Yeah, As man. you can see, we're not waiting for you guys to get settled in. We're getting right to work over here. Yeah. All right, we have a 2012 Mustang. Now, it's kind of a performance-based car. He's obviously done a lot of burnouts. Now, we're going to upgrade the clutch to a performance one. Yeah, uh -huh. so if you've never seen inside one of these things, we're about to tear it apart. You guys stick around. Man, busy, busy, busy on our 2012 Mustang. We hope you out. Been at it. Oh yeah, so we started inside the car. We've got the center console torn apart so we can get to the shifter. Now the shifter is partly connected to the trans, kind of rubber isolated on the car. We had to disconnect that so we can drop the trans down to the bottom. Now we've got the bell housing bolts. This is the last two. So that's gonna be the separation from engine to transmission. So that's about ready to go. Now, last couple bolts in the transmission mount, and we should be able to finesse this transmission right out. Yeah, I know. Make sure you hang on to that tail end. Yep. I got this guy. Just in case we don't have the balance point right on the jack. All right. All right, now wrestling it out is gonna be a little bit of fun. <laughs> uh, let's see, we dropped the exhaust out of the way, the drive shaft you saw. So we're pretty clear, but it's pretty tight in here. And we've yeah. got a little wow on the side of that bell housing. We dropped a starter, but that wow could hit right here on this catalytic converter. So we're gonna try to walk it backwards, get the spline, you know, the input shaft out of the engine, then maybe wiggle this stuff around. turn a little bit. It's always good to have a buddy on hand to help you, because this is a heavy unit when you start messing with it. Show, show the friction material there. You'll see this new one. Kev's gonna break it all down for you. It's gonna be sweet. All right, let's go over to the bench. Show you guys this. Now there's a little bit of effort getting this old clutch out, but the payoff is worth it. Look at this. You can already tell. It's a good, re good reason we took this out, man. There, uh, there's some, some bad boys coming oh, up here. Look man. at that. Tore through it. Wow. So you can see that. No good. You can see the damage here, on the pressure plate. So we got it just in time, but we're not going to replace yeah. it with a stock clutch. No, sir. No, 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 no. no. Look at uh, that. Check thing. this out. Yeah, this is a Power Force twin disc clutch from Ace Racing. Not like the single disc clutch over here, right? So you got one disc in here, and if you pull that guy up, that's your pressure plate. So that's applying pressure on this friction material, clamping against that flywheel. <laughs> now this big old heavy thing, if you look at it, pull that guy up. Yeah. Right? Big old stamp steel. Yeah. Build aluminum, super lightweight, and you'll notice smaller in diameter, which is okay because I need diameter to get that torque, but I've got two discs. So here's my outer disc. Yeah. So that guy lays over like that. I've got this inner Just friction plate here. Yep, floater. And you can see we've got these little tie straps here that keeps the vibrations down, keeps this guy nice and locked in. I've got my second disc there, and then I've got a really Lightweight little flywheel. Where's your flywheel, man? Let me go bust mine off and we'll, uh, we'll do a little comparison. Dude, NASCAR style. <laughs> quick, quick, it, quick, it, man. So what's nice about all of this setup, one, you got a ton of clamp loads. You can handle a whole lot of horsepower on this guy. But because you've got stacked friction plates, you don't need a ton more clamp load, which means pushing it with your foot. So you don't have the burning calf. Everything happens by stacking friction instead of increasing spring rate. Now the inertia part is huge. So this guy not only is light, but it spins up quicker. So you'll notice as soon as you get in the car and you rev the engine, zing, zing, the engine revs up fast, the vehicle moves faster. You can pick up a lot of like, potential horsepower that way. So this big old heavy versus aluminum lightweight guy, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Finger light. So the whole system lets your car act like a race car. And nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. No. Now you want to make some decisions, right? You can get really carried away on clutches. You can get a lot of performance out of them, but you can lose drivability. So make sure you know what you're walking into. You know, with a really lightweight system, it's yeah. great for rev matching on downshifts. It's yeah. great for picking up speed. So you get that quick spool up, that low moment of inertia. And what's also kind of neat is, I'm not just going to set these down here real quick, so I'm not going to line up all the pins. Okay. But if you look, you still got the same torsion springs on your clutch disc. And what's that gonna do? Now that 
pretty much takes a lot of the shock and absorption out, and you got a lot of crank torsional. So each time right. you fire the cylinder, your crank is actually pulsating. Sure. So you get gear rattle when you engage and disengage, let on and off the throttle. You know, those springs can help take a lot of that load out. These will improve the NVH and nice smooth ride. Now, I know something different on these guys. What is, uh, what is this? That's actually pretty cool. Now this is patent design from our Ace Racing clutch system. Okay. These are centrifugal assisted levers. So if you think about this clutch oh, spinning, spinning, that's gonna wing out and push down on that pivot point. Yep. so the mass swinging out here <laughs> is gonna push down there and give you extra bite. Great additional torque capacity. Yeah, additional performance there without that push on the pedal. Exactly. All right, man. And when we get back, we gotta get all this fancy stuff up in the car. So stick around. What is the easiest way to clean the intake valves on my GDI engine? Engine intake valves are prone to deposit buildup because they never get washed with fuel. Now there's an easy way to clean your GDI intake valves without having to disassemble the top of the engine. CDI GDI IVD Intake Valve Cleaner. To use it, start the engine and get it to operating temperature. Locate the mass airflow sensor and use the attached perma straw to insert the product past the MAF sensor directly into the air intake. This will avoid throwing any engine codes. CRC intake valve cleaner reaches the backs of the valves at 150 times the concentration of any premium fuel additive. And it's proven to remove up to 23% of carbon buildup in just the first hour. This tip is brought to you by CRC Industries, the makers of Brake Clean, the number one brake part cleaner. Hey, welcome back to Two Guys Garage. Now come up here. We have our performance clutch twin disc sitting up here. Now I'm going through the torque specs right now. Now the cool thing about a lot of bolts and fasteners and what they're doing nowadays is you'll torque to a certain either pounds or newton meters uh, and then it go to a certain angle. So for example, this is 20 newton meters first, okay, so I'm there. And then a lot of new torque wrenches will have actually a degree on it. We're a little old school here. We want to put this guy up here, we want to torque it 60 degrees. Now that's basically uh, if you use like a molly lube or tranny fluid or any kind of friction stuff on the bolt, this is going to make sure that all those torque specs, regardless of the lube or application you have on the bolt, makes it the same when you get down into the thread. So i got to get this guy set in here. And if you follow that gauge, I'll set it at zero. And I'm going to go 60 degrees off that 20 newton meters. That equals about 80 foot pounds. But there we go. I like, I like the grunt, man. Yeah, man. So how many you got left? Um, all of them. Oh, all of them? But, well, minus the one. <laughs> all right. He's going to be here for a little while. Why don't you walk over with me? I'll yeah. show you a trick. Go get geeky with Kev. All right. The trick is not how to stuff an LS motor in a Mustang. It's really about how to set up a clutch and a throw-up bearing. Now, this is just mock-up here so you can kind of see it, because in the real world, we're not just putting on stock components. We're Mix matching engines, transmissions, bell housing, clutches, throw up bearings. So all that stack up could really throw you for a loop. Now if we go over here to the clutch, right, we've got a throw up bearing. Now it's just a disc that's going to push on these fingers, and these are springs. There's a little pivot point here with pressure. So if I push on this spring, it's going to lift off that pressure plate. So here's what that throw up bearing looks like. Now we're going to use a stock one from the Mustang, so we're going to leave it in there. It's in good shape. But this Tilden one is a great option. These guys do killer race stuff as well as street products. This would sit right in here, like so, bottom out there, and this is going to be hydraulically actuated, pushing on these fingers. But what I really want is I want about an eighth inch gap when I set it up. So I want to pull this back a little ways. And once I put hydraulic pressure on it, it's going to close that gap, and now I'm ready to open it and close it all the time. But initially, I want a little bit of clearance in there with this bottomed out for anything like thermal expansion, wear on the clutch, adjustment of the fingers, etc. So let me show you how to do that. Now I'm going to do it crude. So this is not the measuring device of professionals in automotive, but just to get you a quick technique here. So you want a straight edge across these fingers, and we're going to use a common sort of split line, the bell housing and the block. So this is about four inches. Now what I want to do is make sure that that distance from here to this throw out bearing is about four and an eighth. So I've got that eighth inch gap. So if I set this guy in here like that, slide him in, I take this guy, set it up here, I make my measurement, oh, I'm too far out. Well, what's nice about this tilting one 
is it's got a whole threaded sleeve here, so I can thread this guy in or out if I need to. I've got about an inch and a quarter to work with. And with two million cycles of durability testing, it's gonna definitely outlast my calf buckle. We have it clocked a little towards the passenger side of the car because we didn't take this cat off. We said those bolts were kind of frozen on there. So what we gotta do is try to manipulate it around this cat and this horn. Good luck with that, right? Ah, that's Got it. on, buddy. That's on. All, All right, right, good, All good. Right. Now don't go anywhere. Yeah, no, you handle that. No, I, gotta dude, go, I gotta go tip the dude. Don't go anywhere, I gotta right. get this. No, no. This, this one. <laughs> One bolt in here. Okay guys, what's the number one problem you hear about belts? Noise, right? The number one reason belts make a lot of noise is misalignment. And it's really simple to align them correctly when you have something like this. This is the Deco Diagnostics Kit for any belt system you have on your car. Let me get in and show you some of the kit. Now unlike a lot of kits that use lasers, this one, you won't have those cumbersome attachments because it's really simple. You just have a couple magnets here. You attach it to the reference pulley like that, you'll see the laser come on. And then, this is the one you're aiming for. Again, using magnets, no cumbersome attachments or anything like that. All you want to do is split that deco line with the laser and you know you got your alignment Perfect, all right, really cool feature. A couple other things you'll find in the kit is wear indicators. Now this is gonna slide down in the belt, tell you how far it wore out or whether or not it's in those parameters you need so you can keep it on. Another cool thing is this little tension gauge. Now this thing, it looks pretty simple. You wouldn't believe how easy this is to use. You just put your finger right in here and you just go on a belt and you'll press it. Now some belts have some leeway, some give in there and this will tell you according to that chart where your belt sits at. You get all this in the Deco Diagnostics Kit. You get the tension, you get the wear indicators, you get the chart, you get these two laser alignment tools. Really, it's just designed to outperform all the other belt diagnostic kits out there. You can pick it up at Federated Auto Parts. It's the Deco Diagnostic Kit for any belt issue you may have. This segment of Two Guys Garage is brought to you by Startron, enzyme fuel treatment for all engines. Okay guys, still working on this 2012 Mustang, but now we get to some fun stuff now that heavy duty clutch job is over. Now let's talk sound. From Solar Performance, it's the Mach XJ kit. Now this thing is pretty awesome. All right, first off, you see the muffler. It's not just a muffler, it's actually an X-pipe. Most of us know the benefits of an X-pipe. Well, they wrap it in T304 stainless steel, so you get great sound, awesome performance. Let's look at another part. Now this is called a J-pipe. A lot of people know what drone is. It's this frequency in the cab of the car that irritates all hot rodders and muscle car guys. It's kind of that kind of sound. Well, they really attacked it with what they call a J-pipe. Now what's gonna happen is it's gonna travel down into this J-pipe. The frequency is gonna come in here, wall against this end cap, go back upstream and cancel out that frequency. Pretty cool stuff and it's tunable. So you can select the length, knock out those sounds and that frequency you don't like or you don't want. Another thing about the solar performance exhaust system is everything's mandrel bent. Keeps that three inch tube throughout every bend, unlike some of the factory stuff where they squash it, all right? So it's from Solar Performance. It's their Mach XJ system for a Mustang. This thing's gonna sound awesome. Now, if you're a full-on performance guy, you've got to have a set of carbon fiber brake rotors. Not only are they about half the weight of iron, so 50% less unsprung weight plus the rotational weight, they can handle a ton of heat. And when you're going fast and stopping hard, all that heat is dosing right into the rotor and the pads. This can handle 1500 C of temperature and have full stopping power. Now these are made in America, which is awesome, and they'll last about three to four times longer than the cast iron ones. So check out the killer lineup of carbon ceramic rotors at Fusion Brakes. Now in the old days, it didn't matter what it was, we were gonna stick our hands up in it, we were gonna get gritty, grimy, dirty, greasy, stick our hands in chemicals that didn't seem so bad at the time, but now we know better. Now today, get yourself a good set of gloves, a whole lineup of nitrile gloves from Medina, 
Now these are great because you can get kind of the light colored blues, but you can get also the automotive kind of black. So you can get nice and greasy, doesn't show up so much. At the end of the job, you pitch them, your hands are nice and clean, you go home nice and healthy. Now you can start with four mil, six, nine mil, so you can get whatever dexterity you want, or if you need to get heavy duty, you can step up to the nine. A lot of guys like to go with the six mil, a really great you know, dexterity, a little bit of surface finish on there so you can still do your work, you can still go home. Again, nice and safe and clean. Pick them up. These are all from Medina, a full lineup of nitrile gloves. All right, man, I see one big pipe. Let's see two big pipes. Yeah, All man. the way back. Looking good, man. Indeed, indeed. Couple more things to tie down, make sure those tips are right, and then we're ready to set it on the ground. Yeah, so that means we're gonna move upstairs, but we're gonna take a break. For this week's Federated Factoid, can you tell me what was the only year Ford Mustang did not offer a V8 engine? We'll have that answer for you after the break. What year did the Ford Mustang not offer a V8? That depressing year was 1974. The first year, the Mustang II. The only option engine that year was a 2.6 liter V6. After tremendous complaints, in 1975, Ford offered the 302 V8 engine. But the horsepower rating was a whopping 140 horsepower. Boy, have times changed. Okay, for my six old diesel guys, you might want to pay attention to this. Is it hard to start your diesel? Does it have rough idle? You might want to get an upgrade kit from TechSmart. Now this is a fuel regulator upgrade kit. It's going to increase that pressure, raise the pressure 10 to 15 PSI, just by this little spring right here. And it comes with everything you need, really simple to do, all the hardware, the O-rings, the housing, and the everything, all right? And again, that's going to help things like cruising idle speeds and wide open throttle, help dampen all those components in the injectors as well. So a good little upgrade kit available at Federated Auto Parts from tech smart okay guys check this out a jump box that fits in your shirt pocket it's from noco it's called the genius boost and this thing really is incredible so tell me if you've seen this scenario before this says positive i definitely want to hook up the black one to that that says negative Definitely the red one. No, normally you would see a big explosion with these other little micro chargers like this, but this is the only mistake proof little mini charger that you can get on the market. So when you hook it up right, like it's supposed to be, there's power and that will give you 400 amps pushing to that right there. Up to 20 times you can start a vehicle over and over. It's got USB ports so you can charge things like your cell phone. It even has lights. You cycle through all kinds of lights to help you out as well. This thing really is small, tiny, packs a big punch, a lot like Kevin. It's the NOCO, it's called the Genius Boost. Pick one up. You know, it'd be a shame to put a lot of grunt work in that performance clutch, getting that exhaust routed, but not do some of the easier stuff like cold air intake, pick up some horsepower. So let me show you the old system and then how we're gonna modify it with our new one. So this is our air box, panel filter inside, actually has a breathing port for the cold air to get into the original box, which is a nice feature. And we're gonna retain that as we go forward. But that air comes through here, we meter it with a mass sensor. We've got a symposer, which is Ford's way of actually pumping in some of these nice intake throaty noises into the cabin when you hit that throttle pedal. And then you got PCV. Pretty simple stuff. So it's all disconnected, ready to pop out for you guys to see. So let's get this guy up here and I'll show you the new one. Now this is from Air Raid, really nice kit. And I'm gonna show you some cool features that I like. So we've got all the connections that we need. So some Poser, PCV, we've got different caps, quality fitting, so we can configure it to eliminate it, keep the sound quality in there, however we want. Well, the other things that I like in the air box we're retaining that same cold air intake part, which is cool. It's got a nice seal lip here, so it seals to the hood, but when you pop the hood, you get to see that cool filter. Now, up here is another interesting feature. So if I pop my mass sensor off, so normally I just take this out, drop it in here, and I'm good to go, but because I'm a bigger diameter, which I can make more horsepower with, I'm not calibrated anymore for this sensor to this diameter. So normally I'd have to go do a tune, but if you don't want to do the tune right off the bat, let's say you just put the cold air on, you haven't done exhaust, you haven't done a header, right? You can put this little guy in here. This is a modular Venturi tube. You can set that guy in there. It is the same diameter as the original. Ooh. You put your sensor back in and you're all set for a stock cow. Everything bolts up, you're ready to go. But when you do upgrades, pop Dude. this guy back out, pick up a few more horsepower, 
Kind of cool setup. That is an awesome little trick, man. I like the whole thing because it's no drilling, it's all bolt on, easy on, and you get a choice of filters. You get the traditional oiled filter, the red one, or the Syntho Max in the red, blue, or black. Yeah, great American made system, yes. ready to make some power. So we're gonna take a break. We get done, we'll be just about ready for it. <laughs> <laughs> For more information about anything you've seen in today's show, check out MavTV.com or visit our website at TwoGuysGarage.com. This segment of Two Guys Garage is brought to you by Seatbelt Solutions, the safest seatbelt money can buy. Hey, welcome back. This is part of the show where we get a little, little twitchy, yeah. little Jones, and to get out there and enjoy, I mean, test drive. Test drive, test, test drive. drive, very important, test yeah, drive. So we've got most of the projects wrapped up, but new shoes. So these are Achilles ATR Sport 2, a great performance package for this car. Yeah, man, and a great thing about this tire is it performs in the wet and the dry surfaces, man. It's got this interlocking tread pattern. It's gonna provide all kinds of stability and performance and cornering and so forth. And this sort of beveled little edge, that's actually gonna quiet it down. So you get a quiet yet still mean performing type tire. Silicone rubber base, we got them from tires-easy.com. Great thing I like about them, their prices are great and they have a 45 day return policy with no questions asked. You know what I liked? <laughs> yeah. Ordering these in my pajamas. <laughs> oh, <laughs> bad business. Easy to do, easy to do. Showed up right at the door, ready to go in the car. Yeah, man, we'll get these guys on there with that solo performance exhaust. It's gonna sound good. The tires are gonna have it biting good. We got the clutch in there as well. Yep, we got our Ace Manufacturing clutch, so we're gonna have plenty of torque going out to the mm -hmm. rear wheels, and we're breathing clean on the front side with that air aid, cold air. We all so. kinds of new bells and whistles. Now we just need some seat time, man. Yes, yeah, so that means we're out of time here so we can spend it out there. <laughs> yeah. We'll see you guys next week. Test drive. <laughs>